All right. Hey, good morning, everybody. Scotty Scantlin here, Kansas City, man. Super excited to be with everybody uh, today. Uh, this is, a, you know, again, uh, we're just getting the, the month of September underway right now. And, and, you know, the key to today is to stay focused, right? This is the power hour. We are focused. We know what we're doing. This is where we show you exactly what to do, exactly what to say and how to do it, and when to do it and all of those things. And, you know, it's the beginning of the month. And, and you know, again, we're going into a great week and just super excited uh, for everybody. Uh, as we were talking this morning, here it is Wednesday, right? We were talking this morning about being focused, okay? And also about not becoming a victim of neglect. And uh, a lot of times, you know, whether that be the beginning of the month, you know, you ran hard, you finished, like you slid into home plate, you were a little maybe exhausted, you've been caught up you know, on mental exhaustion and you got a little bit of sleep, and, but you need to kick it back into high gear. And here's why. You do not want to become a victim of neglect. That's the important message, a victim of neglect. And what do we mean by that, right? Well, listen, if you neglect the activity that needs to take place, uh, especially this week, because this is a, there's a holiday weekend coming up, right? It's called Labor Day. And if you neglect to get started effectively in your business right now at the beginning of the month of September, okay? And so what will happen is not only will you become a victim of neglect, but you'll not, you won't lose three or four days. You'll lose an entire week. I mean, the next thing you know, it's, you know, it's like the seventh and you lost seven days and you had no activity and you were not making attempts and contacts and exposures and engagements. And as we talked about yesterday, you know, this is a momentum business, right? You have to stay focused when everyone else around you may be completely focused on their holiday weekend. It's all they care about, right? And sometimes we can get caught up in the whirlwind of familiarity, and that familiarity can pull your focus away from what you need to stay focused on, which is the day-to-day -day routines that actually create the opportunity, that actually create the freedom eventually that you've got a business that, again, is sustainable and running itself. And that's the brilliance. That's the beauty of it, right? But it all comes down to discipline and focus. And what are the disciplines? Well, the disciplines are simply the what we call the base lead measures, right? And the base lead measures are the attempts, the contacts the exposures, and the engagements. Those are the four things that you have to be consistent in, right? The base lead measures. And we track those things here. Matter of fact, we work together and have a lot of fun, count those numbers up. Uh, I don't even know, uh, Letitia, if you don't mind, if you if, do you have the numbers from last month? What was the total attempts that we all did in the month of, uh, you know, in the month of August. We are just shy of 2,000. 1,844 attempts as a group. Look at all those triple digit numbers on there that we did. Wow. 1,000, how much? 1,800? And 44. And 44. We did. Actually, on, no, and 40, 47 because that did a three that we didn't add. <laughs> and here's the deal. What people don't understand is that's just like, 25 or 30 minutes on this call four times a week, okay? In this yeah. group right here, almost 2,000 attempts. Now, what's an attempt? An attempt is an outreach, right? It could be breaking the ice via text message, via instant message. Uh, then it moves from, you know, again, or phone call, whatever it might be, or trying to engage your, your, you know, your prospects, right? You're trying to create a conversation. You're trying to open the door to share some information. The second thing would be what we call a contact. That means you actually had a conversation with them. So attempts, you might not even have talked to them. You may have just sent them a message or a text or a phone call and you just didn't connect. That's an attempt, okay? And then you make contact. That's an attempt also, okay? So you count that as well, okay? So that's an attempt also. So you actually communicate with them. They're messaging you back and forth, right? Okay, stay focused. So we're messaging back and forth, right? We're in it, okay? Now, that contact leads to an invitation, and an invitation is what we call an exposure. So we're inviting them to watch the video. We're inviting them to take the survey. We're inviting them to check out the free mobile app. We're inviting them to jump on the two o'clock Zoom presentation today, okay, with the guest speaker. We're inviting them to an exposure, okay? And so that's the third of the base lead measures. And then the fourth of the base lead measures is what we call an engagement, an engagement means that they actually watched the video. They actually took the survey. They actually checked out the mobile app. They actually 
got on the 2 p.m. Zoom call, the 7 p.m. Zoom call, whichever one you invited them to. You got that confirmed, right? So that is an engagement. And that's why we track these lead measures, right? That's why we track them, okay? We track the lead measures, the base lead measures daily, and then we do a little bit of exercise here on this call. But here's the thing. Can you extend your tracking beyond? Yes, you could. Like, listen, you don't have to stop tracking on this call. Matter of fact, if it's your desire in this month and you set some goals and you said, hey, I'm going to be Performance Club Pro qualified, right? Now, we have a we have an incentive for that. And I'm going to talk to you about that in a second. So something to aim at short term in the first 10 days, okay? But I'm going to be PC Pro. Uh, and so we want to get you focused on achieving that. But here's the deal. If you want to be, you say, I'm, I'm going to be PC Pro or I'm going to be manager or I'm going to be senior manager. Or I'm going to be director or I'm going to be director 3.5. Woohoo! Yes. Okay. Or senior director, Letitia Randolph, right? So an executive, right? I want to be those things. Okay. Well, those people, the people that have achieved director, director 3.5, senior director, executive director, what are they? They're good trackers. Okay. They're good at tracking. They, that's how they got there, right? They, they, they figured out, they got, they got started and they realized, Hey, you know, I need to be, I need to be focused on the base lead measures, right? Uh, I need to stay focused because I, in discipline is what produces success, right? And the discipline and what I can't afford to be, and this is just as important. What I can't afford to be is a victim of my own neglect. And so you can't neglect the day-to-day disciplines, right? You can't neglect the attempts. You can't neglect the contacts. You can't neglect the exposures. You can't neglect the engagements, right? You can't neglect the day. You can't neglect tracking if you want to be a director, You can't neglect tracking if you want to be director 3.5. You can't neglect tracking if you want to be senior director or executive director. And all of those that have been, I mean, Jason Oltoff, brand new director 3.5 first cut, right? Did over 400 in premium last month on his way to senior director. Do you understand what, how did he do that? He tracks. He's a tracker. He's focused. He's not neglecting the day-to-day disciplines. He's doing them. And he also understands, as well as everyone else does, because we're talking about it, but you really understand it when you go through it, right? It's one thing to try to sympathize with it. It's another thing to understand, and you're going through. And how do you go through? You do. But here's the deal. We all understand that if, I'm, if, I, if I choose not to neglect and I embrace the disciplines and the day-to-day and the lead measures and become a tracker, and I bust it between – today, tomorrow, Thursday, Friday, even a little bit Saturday, if you can fit it in, okay? If I bust it, and then I enjoy time with my family, but then I have coming out of the holiday weekend on Tuesday, I've got a plan called Power Hour. I've got, it's on the schedule. I got some appointments pre-scheduled because there's some people that couldn't engage me on Saturday, couldn't engage me on Friday, but can engage me on Tuesday because they said they could, right? So now I got a plan I've got, I'm focused because I took my list and I, you know, again, I took inventory. Okay. That's one thing you should do at the beginning of every month is take inventory. Okay. Get the Sharpie out. Now don't ever delete anybody out of your prospect by legal shield. Don't ever do that because that can affect your percentages. Don't ever do that. Okay. Maybe go through and reorganize them with, I'm going to show you how to do that right now. Okay. I'm going to show you how to go through and reorganize your list on prospect by legal shield with putting people into categories. That'll help you. Okay. Now you'll know who you need to focus on and who you need to be working on. Right. Okay. But here's the deal. Don't, let's not just focus on prospect by legal shield. That's one thing you need to do that, but you also need to have a nice list off what we call a 10 in play sheet off to the side that you're working. Okay. And that 10 in play sheet has to be cleaned up monthly. And what do I mean by that? So you need to get your Sharpie out. So you might understand, what am I doing, guys? Oh, man, I'm going to cut this video up, and I'm putting this out. Focus. We're focusing. Okay, listen, get the Sharpie out. Get the 10 and play from last month. It's got a bunch. It's got some good hot prospects in there, but it's got a lot, probably more junk than prospects, right? And we get the Sharpie out, and we Sharpie off the people that are no longer returning your calls, no longer returning your text messages. They, they need to be taken off the focus list. Do you understand what I'm saying? The 10 and play is your focus list, okay? So you need to Sharpie them off, okay? You can keep them somewhere else. Just get them off of that list, okay? You need to take a highlighter out. Can't find my highlighter. It's right here. Oh, there it is. Yep. 
I'm going to take the highlighter out and I'm going to highlight the people I sold a membership to. I'm going to highlight the people that already signed up as a marketing associate. And then I'm going to move them onto another list. Okay. That's my raving fans. That's my soon to be new associates or my active associates that I need to be training right now and developing in my business. Do you understand? So I'm going to, I'm going to highlight them. Okay. And then I'm going to get a brand new tenant play sheet out and I'm going to take all the hot prospects that I haven't closed and I'm going to move them over to this sheet separate from all the rest that says, hey, these are the people that I could close in the first 10 days and get the bonuses that are on the table with the Labor Day Performance Club promotion, right? Because you all know about that, right? The Labor Day Performance Club promotion, we saw that yesterday. So if you PC Pro qualify, here's, and here's how it works. If you do 60 in premium and one recruit, guys, that should be your intentions on this call. 60 in premium, one recruit, $100 bonus on top of the fact that you're now PC qualified. Okay, you understand? 120 in premium and only one recruit, $200. Okay, if you had your list, if you took inventory and you have isolated, this is important, you've isolated your tenant play. So you know who they are and you now can go close that. Or you could go upgrade a member into an associate because you know how they are. Because why? You sharpied them. Or, you know, you, no, yeah, you did the, you highlight it. Okay. You took the highlighter and you know they are and moved them onto a separate sheet. So you know who they are. Who's the potentials you could close in the business? Who's the potentials you could close in the membership? Who's the potentials you could convert to an associate? You know who they are. Why? Because you, because you took inventory and you're focused, right? What you're not focused on, and this is important because this is what the mind does. It's called law of association. Okay, what you're not focused on, what you've not attached your emotion or meaning to anymore is the people that are saying no and not calling you back. Why? Because you took them off of your list. And now you're not engaging in the emotion you've attached to that. You've moved them away and you've engaged your focus in the energy of the individuals that are potentials and the ones that have said yes and believe in it, right? You understand what I'm saying? You're not just getting focused, you're getting your energy focused and your emotion focused, right? We talk a lot about emotional intelligence in my book, right? The relevance gap. And what I'm doing is I'm controlling my emotional energy and I'm aiming it in the right direction because I'm focusing it on what? People that bought the membership, people that signed up as an associate and people that potentially may still might do that. What I'm not focused on is the people been saying no to me or not calling me back. I've eliminated distraction and frustration and I've moved it off to the side so I'm no longer bothered by those things. I'm tuned up because I know what my goals are. I've got a vision for my month. I'm going for performance club, pro. I'm going for manager. I'm going for senior manager. I'm going for director or director 3.5 or whatever your goal might be. And last but not least, I'm willing to track, right? And let's talk about tracking, okay? And then we'll do a little demonstration on how to, okay, very important. We'll do a quick demonstration on how to uh, clean up your prospect by legal shield list with a little bit of, again, creating categories that'll help you focus when you're working there also as well when you're making your calls and doing all the things that we do. So let's jump over and I'm going to jump into my screen share. So uh, we're going to Facebook, okay? So we're going to go to Facebook. We are going to go to Missouri and Kansas Associates of Legal Shield. Okay, here it is. Missouri and Kansas Associates of Legal Shield. We're going to click on that. Okay, we're going to scroll down here a little bit. So we're on it, right? We can kind of see what's kind of going on here. So all the things. And I am going to click on files. So I'm going to open that up. Let me get this full doc here. There we go. And I'm going to scroll down. Now, here's the deal. If you're going to become a tracker, you're going to need the daily engagement tracker sheet. You're going to need the engagement lead measure report sheet, and you're going to need the 10 and play engagement sheet. Those three things right there is what the trackers use, okay? Let's first take a quick look at each one of them. So this is the daily dial tracker, okay? And, and why do you want to use this? Because it's duplicatable, because you can teach other people this, right? So it works. Like if somebody's really getting serious about their legal shield business and they want to work with me, I need to know that if they're part-time, they need to be doing at least 25 attempts a day. If they're full-time, they need to be doing at least 50 attempts a day or more, right? So I can gauge that. I can see that they turn over their sheet to me and I can see that they did 25 or 50, right? 25 part-time, 50 full-time. And there's room for 25 on that first line, 50 on the whole thing. And my goal is to move from there to getting at least two people fully engaged 
in the, in, in the program, meaning that they viewed a video, viewed a Zoom presentation, got on a three-way call. They were fully engaged that day, two a day. So if I'm doing 25 to 50 dials a day or 50 attempts a day, then I can get a certain amount to, that I will contact. So if I do 50, I might do maybe 10 contacts. If I do 10 contacts, I might be able to do maybe five invites for exposures. And if I do five invites for exposures with my conversion skills, I might be able to convert them over to what? two or three engagements, right? So that's a model, that's called, that's called a formula, okay, right? So what I've done is I've created a, a formula that's very predictable, 50 dials, 10 contacts, three expo- five exposures, uh, two people in engagements, right? Do you understand? If I did that every day, am I gonna be successful, Letitia Randolph? Yes, I am, okay, just shake your head. We can see you there. There we go. Okay, good. <laughs> so, so we know that, right? So we know that, right? So you can gauge. This is a ga- this is a tracking form. This is how you begin to create not just a formula, but you start creating ratios. And ratios can produce success, right? Ratios is measurable and controllable, okay, and manageable and scalable, and you can duplicate it. So that's number one. Okay, let's go to number two. Let's take a look at the second thing that you need. Okay, the second thing you need is what we call the daily engagement or yeah, the day, sorry, the engagement lead measure report sheet, right? So we want to take the numbers that we're doing on the daily dial tracker. And then we want to look at that and we want to pull those numbers over here. So how many attempts did you do on Monday? How many contacts? How many exposures? How many engagements, right? And then premiums earned, right? And then new recruits, right? And then performance club, right? So these are what we call the lag measures down here on the bottom. And these up here, what we call the base lead measures on the top, right? But you start tracking your numbers every day, right? And then you start reporting and then you get a workout partner or you get a mentor, either a mentor or workout partner, somebody else that can look at your numbers and maybe you get on a team, right? We call it Fight Club, right? So we have we create our own little backyard football game, right? We have our own little group of people that we're sort of kind of working this with a little bit and having some fun with it. And we see each other's numbers every day. We're vulnerable. And we open that up and we see that, right? Share. Okay, so this works, right? So then again, at the end of the week, what do you have? Totals. And when you have totals, you can report your totals. And that's what our engagement training is at 8 p.m. on Tuesday nights, 8 p.m. Central Standard Time, right? So we're looking at these numbers and we're transferring it. And we have a thing called Track Club where you can actually report your numbers on that program. And we'll teach you more about that as we kind of get that going. Now, the next thing is, and this is the next thing I want to make sure, and this is where we've been going with this whole conversation today, is the 10 and Play Engagement Sheet Program. Okay, here it is. Boom. 10 and Play. Now, this is simple. Check this out. This is not a complicated form. It's a simple form. It's highly duplicatable. Everybody can do it, right? Especially newer people. You know, again, you know, you want to just have who your hot prospects are. You need to have a tracking and knowing where they're at in the process of exposure. So, you know, we got one through 10. You can make as many copies of this sheets as you want to. So you can have way more than 10 in play, but you should always have 10 in play. But you should never keep the same 10 in play sheet for like three months, Okay, like you need to update your tenant play sheets like monthly. That's why I mean you need to take inventory so we can like kind of separate things so we create a vacuum because then we can see, oh, I thought I had tenant play, but really I only have four, right? Which creates a vacuum and gets you to understand, oh, I haven't been doing enough attempts and contacts and exposures and engagements to have, uh, I need to go do more of those because I got to get my tenant play from four back up to 10. Or, you know, or more, maybe you're shooting for 20, but they, there should always be 10, okay? And you put the start date, their name, maybe their mobile number if you need to. You don't have to write that in there if, you know, again, you've you got access to it on your prospect or whatever. But, hey, message sent, video viewed, appointment set, presentation complete, became a member and associate. What are we gauging? We're gauging the journey, the journey from exposure to engagement to becoming a member or becoming an associate. Every prospect has a journey and that's what we're doing. We're gauging their journey. And that's what I'm training you on how to do. So that's what 10 and play is. Where are they at in the journey? And in some cases, and in many cases, as a matter of fact, some of the people that you invited with an exposure never really engaged and they need to be taken off of your 10 and play sheet. Okay. And they need to be moved off somewhere else so you can control your focus and focus your energy on what you really have 
Okay. So you know what you need to go do consistently. And then by, by that vacuum, just by seeing where you're really at, you begin to understand the value of the day-to-day -day discipline and the focus on the lead base lead measures, right? The attempts, the contacts, the exposures, the engagements. I hope I'm starting to make sense to you guys. Some of you light bulbs are going off. Some of you are like, man, this is good stuff. Some of you are like, hey, I'm going to go out. I'm going to become a tracker because if I become a tracker, like Scotty said, then I can be a director. I can be a director 3.5. I can be a senior director. I can become an executive director. Okay. I can, I, I can achieve it all. Now, how do you back all that up? You back it all up with belief. And I want to make sure that I'm scooting out here just for a second that I touch on this because how do you build belief? You read. Okay. You read 10 pages of a good book a day. Hey, you can't read five, 10, read five. Okay. Start somewhere. Just get started reading daily. Why? Because you need to make an investment in your belief, right? Focus. Building an Empire by Brian Carruthers is the book everybody's reading right now. If you're not reading it, if you're not teaching your team to read it, then you are missing the boat. We're going to do book studies on this. This is going to be a consistent thing. It's going to go across the board in Legal Shield. Matter of fact, I'm referring this to people that aren't in Legal Shield that are in other network marketing companies that I know that I associate with. And they're reading this book now, right? This is a big book. And you need to read it. You need to build your belief every single day. And then that's why you get on these calls, okay? And we do the activity. You watch the videos. You do the activity. You're reading 10 pages of a good book a day. You're doing the activity, man. It's the armor, that's how you armor up, man. I just came from Bible study. They're like, how do you armor up? 30 minutes to an hour a day, spend it, you know, you know what I'm saying? Like spend that time alone with the Lord. I do that in my faith. Why are you not doing it in your business? Do you understand? You got to do it's the same principles, focus, okay? And so, uh, man, I'm, I'm putting this out there. I'm going to cut this up. This is going on my YouTube channel. This training right here, we're just doing right now, this is going on my YouTube channel. Now, Last thing I want to show you guys is just quickly how to clean up that prospect by Legal Shield, right? And so, for some of those that are watching the YouTube channel later, because I'm going to put it up there, um, you're like, you don't, what's prospect by Legal Shield? Well, you know, send me a message, I'll tell you a little bit about it. But here's the deal uh, I'm going to click on here, I'm going to jump on. Yeah, I'm getting, my, I'm getting my app up and running here so I can just jump right onto the Zoom. And we're going to give you a quick demonstration on how to do that cleanup on your inventory. Okay, here we go. Boom. We got that rocking, and here comes the prospect by Legal Shield. Okay, gonna share my screen and screen and start now, and boom. Okay, you guys can see now. There's my apps. Okay, but I'm gonna click on prospect by Legal Shield. I'm gonna open up my dashboard. Well, can you see I've got over 403 people in my contacts now? Are all of those uh, in on the ten and play right now? No. Okay, but you see the little red thing up at the top. It says 68. That's my 68 that qualified as a hot prospect. Doesn't mean they're hot anymore. It just means at one point in time, they watched a lot of video, interacted with me. You can see their little points. You see the little purple thing with the points right there? Like Cynthia's got 100 points. I gave her five stars, so on and so forth. But Taylor Gray, he was a five star. He was red hot, but then he said, I'm not interested. So what did I do? I took his stars down because I don't want to keep wasting my time focusing on somebody. It's not a five star, you know, hot lister, right? But I'm going to go ahead and click on Taylor. And this is what I did. I put Taylor in the not interested category. Do you see that on labels? And so what you want to do is you want to use labels in your prospect by legal shield to clean up your list. See, I just clicked on it. He's listed as not interested. I can turn that on or I can turn that off, right? And there's a lot of other things. Three-way call, I can do that. Private business reception, if he had happened to have done one. Business briefing, so on and so forth, right? So you can uh, use the labels that are already existing there. Unresponsive, there's another one lead program, maybe they're in a lead program, whatever the case may be, survey post response, right? We can label. And by labeling, it gives us an idea of where this person is at in their level of interest, if that makes sense to you, right? And so that way, and then when I get finished, I need to click apply. And so not interested in CL. So he was a, a, a lead, okay, an opportunity lead from my choice leads, which is where I get my leads for, you know, opportunity leads, right? So again, you can kind of see how that works. And I can go do that through that. And I can do that with the overall total context. So we'll go back to the homepage and I'm going to click on my contacts real briefly. And as you can see here, I 
have a nice list and I could scroll real fast like that. You can see I got tons of them. There's over 400, right? But I'm always focusing my energy, my energy on what? The people that are in play, the people that are responding and reacting. Now, from time to time, I may go down through my list from time to time and hit everybody with sort of an all-inclusive, all-in-one message that would, you know, again, communicate like something like, say, for example, I might say, hey, listen, I know we never got a chance to talk further, but have you have you decided that working a J-O-B is not going to produce the, the dream life you've always dreamed of? If you're still open for an opportunity, I could go through and hit everybody like that if I wanted to. And that's why I leave them in there because time to time, I can use an all-encompassing net message to reach back out to people that at one point in time raise their hand and said, I am interested. That's why we never want to delete anybody, but we definitely want to get our systems organized. So with that said, that's my training for the day. We're going to put that up on the YouTube channel. We're going to put that out there, guys. Super excited. And we're going to turn it over to Letitia Randolph, the hostess with the mostest, paying my bills, right? New senior director. So super excited to have her as a part of our organization. We have a lot of fun on this call. Letitia, let's get started on some activity for today.